Imagine when we look ourselves in the mirror and we do not see ourselves. Are we not doing the same thing with our own thoughts? In this episode, we are going to look into self-reflection and how pandemic could be the right time to do it. that you are giving till now and today is actually a very interesting topic i love talking about you know self improvement and how we can as a human being can get better so today's topic is on self reflection on pandemic and i think as we are in our home isolated from the world mostly from all the social connections except the online we find ourselves in a very unique position that we hardly would actually experience in all our life and this might be one of the best time where you actually self reflect your own life and see where you stand and see where you want to go so for me i want to discuss this today because i feel it is really really important and a lot of people who are there at their home where they have the kind of it's really hard to comprehend the concept of what actually is happening but are still looking for ways to improve themselves are still looking for ways to kind of build themselves again and i think maybe i could give them some insight and some ways and some kind of you know a journey on how things revolves and how biased we are in lot of thinking and and w- what kind of mindset is that we need to carry during this pandemic that will actually help us in coming days so starting with right we have to just understand what is the problem okay if you really ask what is the problem you kind of say that yeah we are lo- in the lockdown that is the problem then you ask why is that i because there was a pandemic there was a virus it got everywhere around and you know it actually took all over the world we were locked down we are staying at home that is the problem then you ask who do you blame then in a very there are different blames you could give right one of the blame could be like the world leaders they knew this pandemic would come they knew there were so many research done and you know told to all this political leaders that we need to take a very strong action before we have to see this day but they didn't make that choice meaning they were in- incompetent to see that was something that was coming we could blame them and stay at our home definitely you could blame china because the outbreak came from there and people didn't let them let other people know there was no proper communication there was too it was too politicized china wants to rule the world all that thing all that conspiracy theories you could definitely believe that and buy that as an answer or you could blame the government because they are not doing a good job or your family because they really don't understand the because you're staying at home being a good kid and they still have something to say to you and that makes you feel frustrated and i think that that might be one of the that might be a lot for a lot of people a lot of young people when they are staying at home and also you might say that okay these are not my problems i am i am i don't care what is happening around the world but i dwell in past you know i spend a lot of time thinking about the past 
what happened, how beautiful it was, or how sad it was. Oh, thinking about my ex, thinking about my friend that I'm missing, like I am dwelling into that past happiness or sadness. Or you could just blame stupidity around, like how stupid people are, how they are reacting, and you know how they are not able to see what is going around in a very factual way. And I know some people might be even thinking that way. At all, all at the end, you could just say, you know what, Robin, people are just selfish. They are purely selfish and all they care about is their own personal gain. From political leader to a, to a driver to anybody, everybody is doing whatever because they care about themselves. Yes, definitely. I think it's a law of nature. Everybody should take care of themselves first. That is one of the most important way of surviving in this planet. So, you know, a lot of these things I just said, right, does not include me into it. Like, I. Maybe the problem is not everything else but the problem is you maybe the solution that you're looking is not anywhere else but inside you so if you actually you know so the, it, it comes with this scenario i want you to imagine so imagine a scenario right where you go to the mirror and you don't see yourself can you imagine that like just imagine close your eyes and just try to imagine you go to the mirror and you do not see yourself. It is one big fucking mirror, but you do not see yourself. What are you looking at? And when you look at the mirror really carefully, all you see is everything I just told you. You see your you know, parents yelling at you. You see what is happening around the world. You see how Trump is acting. You see, you know, how your friends are, uh, you know, doing a video call or group chat where you are not involved. Or you see how you've been left out from your family or from everybody else. Or, or, or you see, like, you know, you see everything else but yourself. And you know what What everything else denotes? It denotes your own ego. Like that's, that's what I would say is because at the end, it is your own perspective, right? Nobody else is seeing that. It's your viewpoint. So there, you are seeing yourself, but not in you. You're seeing yourself, you're seeing you through everything else. You view the world, how right and wrong is through everything else, but not really trying to see or judge yourself. So all we do all day, these days, and a lot of people are doing in this pandemic, is they try to justify or blame or kind of point out fingers to others. And how does that feel? Doesn't that feel weird when you look into the mirror and you see everything else and you don't see yourself? And that is what exactly is happening most of the time. You know, the whole point of self-reflection is to see yourself in that reflection, just you. Just you, no, nobody else. Just your life, just your present and your future. So... I think what I would want to start with is by saying that maybe you need to get a better mirror. You know what I'm saying? At least in your head, you need to get a better mirror in your head to look yourself and see if you can, you know, really reflect that true self that you are trying to figure out for a very, very long time. And and I'll tell you, it's not your fault entirely because you cannot see yourself in the mirror. You know, we see everything else but ourselves. We don't see our weaknesses nor our strength because we don't see ourselves at all. And it's not your fault. You know, 
we are being genetically designed in a lot of ways our ancestor were in a very different environment than we were and the reason why we still act you know in a very subtle um, behavior and we don't even understand why we do that because we are strongly wirely programmed in that pattern and everybody thinks in that pattern the fear pattern the you know worry pattern the pattern of blaming others but we can we truly improve ourselves because of it can we truly bring some change because of it i don't think so and and once you understand that okay robin you know you said that i have a problem with my self reflection you said you know they it is genetically programmed because i am not able to see myself because nobody in our past have actually looked into themselves as a whole collectively than our generation then then you ask so can you break the pattern and i would say of course you know we just make error we make mistake in our judgment you know we make judgment mistake in our judgment in our relationship we make judgment mis- mistake of judgments in our own finance in our own ideas with even our time and how we going to spend it so we play this blame game either we gonna blame the other person or we gonna blame ourselves either we going to put the guilt on other person or we going to put the guilt on ourselves and that is what i think uh, we sometime do because either we are really confident that we going to succeed on this because it's like you know we overestimate ourselves sometimes because you know we try to see that oh i'm going to do it and i'm going to make it and it's going to happen it's called survival bias so when you try to uh you know kind of bring a systematic overestimation of your chances of succeeding we tend to lose and and you know one of the industry that actually makes a huge money because of this bias that we have is gambling so people go because they feel lucky they feel estimated that they are going to win but you know it's a business and it is designed for profit so regardless of what at the end overall in the overall value the the casino is winning so so this is one of the bias that we have and going to the other bias that i i strongly feel that we have is this swimmer body illusion so what do you, what i mean by that is that we get confused in the selection factors with the results for example if you are if if you think the reason that the professional swimmers have a good body because they train a lot is a wrong way to think and because they become you know professional swimmers because they had a good body to begin with it's just that they train harder and harder to become more perfect in it so you you have to understand that it's it's not the it's not the hard work a swimmer does that makes him a good swimmer is inherently given to him by the nature as a body figure that he could train and become a good swimmer so that is why not everybody can be a good swimmer so it's like understanding that fish cannot walk understanding that the frog cannot fly you you you're getting me this is the illusion that we have we believe that the frog can frog can fly so what i mean by this illusion is to try to see yourself as the way you are try to kind of contemplate what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses in a very honest way that might increase the chance of winning you know and you try you trying to be this uh, um you know 
a great person by overestimating yourself, by doing po- positive talks all the time, or trying to uh, see things in a very surface level and say that, no, everything's going to be all right, it's going to be fine, we got to stay optimistic. We, we can do that. That gives you a temporary high and satisfaction for that particular moment or for that particular conversation. But at the end, you got to dwell into certain sadness or you got to dwell into certain kind of emotional disbalance within yourself because you have not truly self-reflect. So you might ask, right, why are you talking about this bias and how does it relate to my self-reflection? I am I'm trying to put you into a perspective. So let me give you a third example. And it's like, you know, why do we see shapes in clouds? Like, have you ever thought about it? When you look in the clouds and you look long enough, you tend to see certain shapes, like, you know, shapes. And that is very unique to the person who is seeing from where they are seeing, and which part of the country they are seeing, or which part of the world they are seeing. But you, you see the shape that is there in the sky and and you make something out of it why does that happen you know if if you want to understand this you have to understand that we are a pattern living human like in a pattern being what what i mean by that is that we see pattern that fits our own values and belief that is why there is so many different opinion so when he, when when a person who is very religious he goes and looks up in the sky he might see he might see god or he might see a figure of god but a person who just watch game of thrones all the time and he was there for a week and he goes and looks in the sky he might see a dragon so all i'm saying is that we see the shape in others because that is what is being reflected inside us you know for example america there is a left and there is a right there is a right people you know people with who have a very different mentality on how the country should run and there is this there's p- group of people who think you know these are the values and real values of america that how we should be living so they are having a difference in opinions on what is the real value of how we should see the clouds they are looking at the clouds and they are looking at it in a very very different way and it is really really hard when you know when somebody sees the cloud in a certain way and then you are seeing the cloud in a certain way to kind of come to an agreement saying that we are seeing the same cloud aren't we so you know it gives us because it is very sensitive as well as a person right somebody challenges your values or beliefs or what you've been thinking and how you've been thinking for a very long time it is quite hard it is quite um, it is qu- quite a position to be it's quite embarrassing for a lot of people but you know all i have to say is that we have to discover we have to look at the clouds and we we have to say that this is what i see and you you can know what i see by looking at the figure maybe by drawing the clouds or by actually putting that clouds into a form of you know a program to see whether this is the right shape of the cloud that i saw and you saw what i'm trying to say is that you have to discover something very very new because you know and that doesn't end there because we can discover how the cloud cloud looks we, uh, einstein can discover some you can be an einstein if you want because you discovered something no that's a survivorship bias you have to do the test again and again because when you do the test mm-hmm. and when you prove it that is when you become an einstein that is when you actually try to see the real image that was there in the cloud that is when you maybe get a glimpse of yourself in the mirror so all i'm trying to say is that trying to find a new way doesn't give you the real answer but finding that way and trying to question that way in every possible way and even not by yourself but by taking the help of others might help you to really find that way better 
so you know you might like let me give you a uh, you know let me let me say to you you know doubting doubting is good when you doubt something on a right way is good because you're questioning whether that the whether the fact or the information or the values or the beliefs are really truly coming from him because he believes it or because he is biased so it's like if 50 million people say something foolish it is still foolish you cannot say that because everybody said it we it is right and there are a lot of things in context to our marriages in context to our how we need to raise our kids in context to how the country should be running we might have millions of answers but at the end we got to figure out which one is foolish and which one is not so you know this factor of social proof dictates individual f- how they feel and how they are going to behave correctly when they act the same as the other people do meaning that we do something because everybody is doing and it is kind of a social proof that you can exist in that particular society because everybody is doing that in a right way and in this pandemic it is a it, it is coming to a good use the whole idea of social proof when everybody is told uh, to stay at home we are staying at home a lot of people are staying at home but there are but there are still places where it is being challenged so you have to understand that most of the time like how we do is defined due to our social behavior so how, so you under, you you get the whole picture that there is different biases and there is this whole idea of how we should be living that dictates our own thinking so how do we self reflect on this you know how do we truly really find ourselves in the mirror when we have so much of clustered information that is filling the mirror and you are not even be able to really see yourself in that so we come in solution so this was all me talking about the problem you know what a true reflection looks like and what what are different reasons why we think in a certain way so one of the solution i would say because i think it is really really important <laughs> is to forget your past my friend and i'm telling you is about letting it go letting yourself go you know i cannot change cuz i have done something so much already i cannot quit this relationship because i have given so much in this relationship i cannot start something because it's already too late to start something new for me you know there's no time for me all of this i would say as i reflect in this pandemic is bullshit is bullshit for yourself you tell all your life and most of the people will tell their all their life to themselves that they didn't have time you have time don't you look around you have all the time in the world if you really really want to self reflect and and you know the whole fear of the change makes people not look in the mirror in the first place and that creates a huge dilemma because then it is going to affect your relationship it is going to affect your friendship it is going to affect your business ethics it is going to affect everything else and then you you overlap with the fear of what the society is going to think what are your parents going to think what are your friends going to think if you do all this they might find you crazy no they won't because they are doing the same exact thing they are dwelling into the same exact thing you have to understand that the only person that you should be seeing in that mirror is yourself nobody else you should not be caring about any others other people's opinion for the matter of fact and and especially if those opinion doesn't even come from a right place meaning that how would they be 
how how do you think they will be able to give you a good advice if you are not able to see yourself as you are you understand what i'm trying to say it's like if your friendship is measured by how much you care about your friend then i feel i feel it is a shallow friendship because is the friendship should not be measured in how much what is the amount that you care but the amount of memories that you create together or the amount of real criticism that you could actually tell the person without being feared of judge or actually take the criticism for yourself so that you don't you can actually improve and be a better version it's like you know we think we download one software and that's it and that is what we're going to play all our life we're going to just use iphone 3 and then we're just going to be iphone 3 all our life no you there has been already proven fact that you can be iphone pro 11 okay you can evolve yourself you can change yourself and maybe this pand- pandemic could be a right time to really self reflect on what are the changes that you need to bring in yourself and for me so when i say change right the change has to be for the right reason so you got to be very careful when you think about all this cuz it can take you to loop into thinking something very different you know so what i say is leave the past only the view of the future will set you free only when you don't dwell into the past will set you free so take action you know go to the mirror ask yourself and try to see yourself in the true reflection of yourself in the future try to see oh this is how i'm going to look in the mirror in coming 5 years or 2 years or 1 month or in one week what do you think you need to bring as a change what do you think you need to bring as a as a task so you know here it is a challenge i give you a challenge as we talked about you know how self reflection can be biased and how how it is a problem how it is a genetic problem what are the different biases that we have and basically how you can actually start so the start might be letting your past go now what to do okay i can think in my head no it's not enough you got to write it down so i give you a challenge write down five things that you think of yourself and five things that you think other people think of yourself you understand what i'm trying to say regardless of where and how and how good or bad you are it doesn't matter try to write those five things that you think of yourself like who are you right and five things that you think other people think of yourself and try to compare maybe try to find an honest friend who gives you a very right answer and and is able to very critically give you a very good feedback find a mentor find somebody who you can go and find online to really see whether that makes sense to you or not and because i i i see this as uh, you know it is very important to listen to yourself very clearly and then listen to other people very clearly so that you can make a right you know composition of yourself because this is what you are you are what other people say to you you are what you say to yourself so the fusion of both makes you like in the reality so i think having that clear picture on what it is what what stands as you would give you a good reflection once you know that you might be able to see yourself in the mirror and then you might be able even to point out oh now i know what i need to change and now i know what i need to do and what are the things that i need to take as a step to bring that change in my life so all i'm saying is compare compare yourself like in an honest way you know i remember me playing this game of trying to figure out 
you know, one good thing about me and one bad thing about me, about uh, me through others. So I would get people, my good friends who I can trust, group of eight or six, and then we would play a game that there'll be one good thing that you will tell about me and one bad thing that you think I have. And we would be honestly reflecting as a group. And I know it can be very, very awkward. And some people who try to bully you might try to bully you. Or some people try to, you know, really feel embarrassed to tell you that. But I think you got to find that safe space between people when you are able to have this real conversation. And I'm telling you because it gives you a huge uh, understanding of yourself through the other people's eyes. And it gives a clear representation of what other people might think about you too. So, you know, and then you can really filter out who are your true friends and who are not. Because there will be few people who will always say something that does not help you at all. It just makes you more miserable. So, you know, try to filter that out from your life. So, all I'm saying is that, I don't have, you don't have to listen to me and you don't have to improve. You can live that life. It's all good. But are you happy? Are you really satisfied? If not, maybe it's good time to give you a try so that you can just see yourself in that mirror, you know, so that you do not have those survivor bias, so that you do not have those swimmer body illusion where you think we, we, you know, Oh, we get what we can really try and do. But you actually self-reflect on what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses so that you do not be blindsided by the social proof that you try to seek on others. So, so the honest analysis of yourself in this, current, in this time when you're, in, when you're stuck at your home all by alone in your room trying to really see how you're going to you know, move forward in your life Maybe it's a good time, you know. Maybe it's a time where you really do this proper test for yourself and make that change. Because I'm telling you, if you're able to really do this, right, if you're really able to really spend a huge amount of time to figure out who you are, what you stand for, what you believe, what your values are, where those values come from, then you might be able to make yourself valuable to the whole world. Maybe you can bring that change in your own place from the power that you have, from from the kind of, you know, uh, you can bring the change in other people's life because you can help them to really see what is that you really have to do. And that, I think, makes a better world. That, I think, is true meaning of being human. So that we as collective, we move forward for this infinite journey of progressing ourselves as a civilization so that one day maybe we'll be traveling through, you know, different galaxies. And I, I genuinely believe that our personal goals and ambitions and strength does help collectively how faster and how slower we are moving so you know and we it will help us to create a lot of different opportunities because we now see things very clearly and what truly matters what truly matters to you what truly matters to your own values what truly matters to your own community and the steps that you take towards it brings a huge amount of change in yourself, in your society, in your family, in everybody's life. So the reason why you self-reflect is not only for yourself. The reason why you self-reflect is to make this world better. So please, please, please go and do the self-reflection. Go and do the real analysis of yourself. And I'm telling you, you'll be amazed, you'll be surprised of how important it is and how regularly we should be doing this and how, how important it is to actually keep our mind on the right track. So all I'm saying is, in this pandemic, you have one of the best opportunity in the whole 
lifetime to self reflect this is i think the best time to self reflect so don't waste your time on dwelling into some sadness or pain or whatever it is don't go and do the self reflection you might be just moving forward in the right direction and 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 i'll tell you if you get confused you don't understand this you can always you know reach out to me and i can help you with certain things that you could try and that might work for you because every person is different every person has their own way of seeing things so all i have to say is that find your way but see it see yourself in the mirror yes so saying that much for today I am really thankful for everybody who's listening to me and you know especially all my friends families and everybody who whoever is there around the world listening to this voice all I have to say is that I care about you and I care about your self reflection and I care about what you are going to do in this life moving forward so go discover yourself go find yourself go seek yourself thank you very much i'll see you next time